And we are back, guys, here in episode 4 with young Doc Brown and Marty McFly in the 1930s. Now, if you haven't seen the first few episodes, go ahead and watch those, and uh, that'll get you caught up to what we're doing here. And so, Marty's trying to get young Doc to tell him a little bit more about that rocket drill. He wants to trust him. So we're trying to get that out of Doc. So let's see if we can do this. I'm going to tell him I'm a scientist too. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe <laughs> you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected <laughs> to the thigh bone? Amazing. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. <laughs> the only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Yes, you do. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Oh, jeez. Oh, this is cool, guys. Law offices Gale, Zemeckis, and Fine. So, I'm not sure about Fine, to be honest, but I do know Bob Gale and Bob Zemeckis are the two. Uh, Zemeckis was the director. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Oops. Sorry about that. Sounds like you're a little scared. You said point. that. The only people. Uh, about your say it. So he doesn't want to hear much from me. So I'm gonna see if Doc can help me again, because young young Doc is not being helpful at all. Let me tell you. Older Doc, hello. Doc, Marty, how close the escape plan? I saw my grandpa. Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Oh. Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kitan's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Hmm. Well, what are you doing in jail in the first place? How'd you wind up in jail in 1931 anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a straight brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. Ooh. It's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. That's horrible. Where have you been? Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. How's the family? So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now, we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. <laughs> well, let's see. Where did the DeLorean come from? Where did the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah. Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine, one that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Griff Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... 
is for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. Wow. Oh, we know what he's doing in 1931. We know why he's in jail. What about Kid Tannen? What's the story with this Kid Tannen jerk anyway? This father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. Wow. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, <laughs> San Quentin will be blues. in prison. As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. Well. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Ugh. True. Okay, let's look at some of the hints here. Emmett won't give you the time of day. Perhaps if you... Perhaps if you two had something in common, right? What Emmett? What's Emmett muttering to himself about when he thinks you're not listening? Emmett's scientific problems are gibberish to Marty, but there's somebody who can make sense of them. Try recording his mutterings. Ah, oh, perfect. All right. Well, let's go find young Doc and record what he's saying. That's why I love the hint. You know, sometimes they just help you get an idea of what's going on. You know. All right, Doc. Now, if H stands for the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator, then naturally. No, sorry, I didn't want the hints. I wanted the inventory. Klondike. That's his phone number. Here's it. Perfect. There. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. <laughs> he was like this weirdo recording me. Well, they didn't even have recorders like that. So I don't think he knew what he was doing. Yeah, recorders are huge. Alright. So let's do this. Let's go back to Doc and play it for him and see if he can tell me what it means. Okay. Here. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Good grief! Is that me? I sound so young. I was going to say intense. <coughs> I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast <laughs> two-dimensional membrane. Okay, sure. So... It'll be fine. <laughs> All right, well, let's run to Doc's younger self and tell him. The Hamiltonian operator, I believe that's what he said. Oh, hello. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Well, maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Uh, from, uh, I read a lot of Jules Verne, yep. Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. Yeah, I confess, sure. I I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Perfect. I really need your Can you see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. I need it tonight. Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. 
<laughs> it can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel! I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. Mm. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. <laughs> Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. <laughs> <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. Oh. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. <laughs> I love the dialogue in this game. Alright, well, should we talk to Kid Tannen? Or Edna? Let's see what Edna has to say. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. I'm sorry about Einstein. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very <laughs> good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. <laughs> what about the other you story? the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. Oh, Edna. All right, oh, guys. So, <laughs> so I, I, I think I gotta go over to talk to who is it? Tannen's grandpa, Biff, Biff's grandpa. So let's see what he has to say. The hell matches you you got kiwi all over my socks sorry boss get out of here how about you huh i'm sitting at a shoe shine booth you walk up either you're here to shine my shoes or you got a death wish which is it yeah i'll shine your shoes get some info from you I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Hmm, do you know where he is? Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the office? I forget. Hmm. When so can I when find him? When do you him? think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. Wait, isn't that Artie's hat? Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I buy that hat from you? Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? Could you keep your mind on your work, huh? Shoeshine boy? Hanging on to my peanut bowl. Hmm, stubborn, huh? I want some peanuts. Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. What the hell is that? Hey, kid. Yeah. What the hell is that? Hey. <laughs> Just like the other movies. What'd you do? You lousy crook! Damn it! Good job! Nobody makes 
a monkey out of Kid Tannen. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Ow! Fix me up! Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get it out. <laughs> Sweet. Well, now I need a little hint. Earlier in the game, Marty used an object to find its owner. How? Oh, yes. Perfection. Einstein. I love that you're such a good helper. Where's Einy? Einy. All right, Einy. Can you tell me where this guy is? Hey, Einy. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey boy, can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Good job, I need. Where's he going? Only one way to find out. <laughs> Doc. Isn't that where Edna what lived? Huh. Huh. Deja vu. It is. Well, let's call up. Yeah? Who is it? It's McFly! Shh, I know! No. Don't say anything, Doc. Let's just show him his hat. I'll give it back to him after I give him the subpoena. Oh, right. That's, that's first. So, let's see. I'm gonna have to talk to him first. Okay. Someone's playing tricks on me. Hmm. How can I get him downstairs? The subpoena. I can't. Maybe not. Right, okay. Well, let's see if Doc can Need help. Need any help? Me. Yeah, I do. Um, never mind. So. Hmm. Einstein Thanks help? for bringing us here, boy. We'll ah. take it from here. Well, let me buzz him. What now? All right, let's talk to him. Hey, Arthur, can you come down a minute? Do I know you? Uh, we're not family. I've got something for you. Yes. We've got something for you. It's a sub uh, subscription to the. Accountant Weekly. He won't come out if he knows why we're really here. No, oh, right. Ha! <laughs> I'm not interested. And besides, the boss won't let me leave the room. Hmm. Sorry. Some other time. Oh, jeez. Let's try it again. What now? Let's try again. It's me again. Please come down. Why? We are the law. We represent the law. You don't want to go against the law, do you? No, but I don't want to go against Kid Tannen either. And he ordered me to stay put till he gives the word. Huh. Sorry. Some other time. How can I get him down? Get something from the town center. Well, we're coming up on time, so I think before I get to the town center, I should just call it quits for this episode. Guys, I hope you're liking this. This is an amazing game. Such a great movie style game where you're on an adventure. You have to figure things out. It's wonderful. So, Please like this if you like the video, and uh, hopefully we'll have more coming up soon. Uh, subscribe if you haven't to see more videos like this. Thank you, and have a great day.